Hey YouTube, we're going to do a quick little bit on this awesome purchase that I got yesterday at the Antique Arms and Wolverine Knife Collectors Club show in uh, Novi, Michigan. Could be Northville, I think it's Novi still. They hold it twice a year, I think. It's a very, very nice show. There's a million knives out there, all the makers, autos, regulars, everything. Everything you can think of, any style, art knives. I saw a birch tree knife out there. It was the most expensive birch tree ever made. I think the guy was asking 5200 for it. And he won it out of some kind of raffle to purchase, he said, like last week in Vegas. It was a seriously awesome knife. It looked like a hatchet, the way it was cut, like a lot of birch trees do. And it had, like, engraving of a samurai with uh, chrysanthemums or something going down the side of it, it, it was sick. I mean, if I had the money, I'd have bought it. I loved it. It was, it was really cool. But uh, I went there with my hinderer, which as much as I wanted it, I wasn't exactly fond of. Never found a place in my pocket, and I didn't, didn't look at it a lot. To see if I could maybe move it to somebody. And walking around, one of the dealers there, this guy by the name of Rich, is a really nice guy. Does a lot of... A lot of deals with another buddy of mine. I was talking to him about some of the stuff he had in his his uh, counter on his display table, which is some of everything, and you're talking from expensive to super expensive, just beautiful knives. I happened to see an Anzo sitting there, and it had the, uh, this, this Jen's Anzo had the, what's he call it, like Puzzle Piece G10 with a Damascus blade and an upswept edge. It was really nice. Really nice. I almost bought it. My God, I can't remember the name of it right now. You, those of you who know his work, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. And that thing was just pure, pure, pure beauty. He, uh, I was right there. The guy, he knocked 50 bucks off the price and I was about to grab it when I looked above it and I saw this one. And uh, while I was talking to him, he noticed I had a box in my hand, asked what it was. I told him it's a hinderer. I asked him if he knew anybody around the show that would maybe be interested in it. And he said he would be. So we worked out a deal. And I happened to notice this one sitting above that other Anzo. And although it looks really plain in comparison and it doesn't have the Damascus blade that the other one did, which I really liked, I decided that this Anzo Haddock needed to leave the show with me so let me there we go you'll see it's g10 scales with a pretty thick titanium slab on one side i'm sorry the g10 scale on one side the pretty thick titanium slab on the other the short anso pocket clip you see it as a frame lock it has room for a lanyard hole there are two standoffs in the back which have bead blasted Torx bit screws and it looks like a pin holding the blade stop. I don't see a screw head for it anywhere. And on this side again a bead blasted Torx bit pivot to match the titanium. Looks very nice. There's no thumb stud or anything of the sort and closed which is just as important to open as open to me with a knife are the ergonomics closed because that's where it spends most of its life in your pocket but there's no sharp edges or nothing sticking out or protruding to grab your hand or your pocket when you're sticking your hand in your pocket to get something else or to tear up your jeans and stuff this thing is smooth all the way around no crazy sharp corners no problems and the little short clip seems very nice it doesn't need the thumb stud and you hear that lock it's a beautiful, beautiful blade. I like the upswept, upswept edge. It looks really neat to me. Uh, I don't know why, but for some reason, every time I look at this thing, I'm thinking of the old kung fu movies where this dude's chasing somebody around with a meat cleaver. Because that's kind of what it looks like in the blade shape to me. The sculpted G10 is black and gray. Done very well in Anzo's normal style. And the blade is perfectly cut. There's not a lot of grinds on here to get messed up, but the edge 
is perfectly matching and you see it's cut even back here you'll notice how thick the spine is that's that's probably twice a normal Sabenza blade at the spine and at the edge he has a hollow ground so deep that it comes to a super fine scary edge like a scalpel. I could probably shave with this thing and wouldn't be too irritated by it. When it's open, the ergonomics are really quite nice. It doesn't look like it's anything special in this way, but that's just enough of a choil to get you to stop on it, and the way that the handle's curved and his sculpting makes it feel perfect. A little jimping here would have been nice, but this is kind of simplicity and in, in perfection. There's nothing extra, and it doesn't need it. You have a superb cutting edge, a super thick spine, titanium slab with G10 slab, my two favorite materials on a blade for handle material, and an ultra strong frame lock that you see engages about 20%. And that's very, very, very nice. The lockup is perfect. If I was using the tripod, I'd show you there's no wiggle in any direction. And this probably matches Chris Reeve tolerance. When closed, the detent is awesome. You'll see it pop right in. You hear it suck in. It is as tight as tight could be and evenly placed. Perfectly centered. Just a beautiful, beautiful knife. So simple. But so much thought went into it that I'd have to give this thing a 10 out of 10. Like I said, the only thing I might change is a little bit of jimping here. to Get my thumb a little more feel, but the blade is so fat, you really just don't need it. A little bit of curve, you can get up on it for some light work. A little bit of whittling back here for some power work. Even the way he sculpted it out here at the pivot, for normal hammer hold, the side of your knuckle sits on that rounded indent. and makes it feel perfect. I give him a lot of credit. The short clip is really nice. Wasn't sure if I'd like that. And this thing is just truly sick. If you guys have been looking at Anso's work, I'd say go get one. It's really awesome. I'm very happy I have this. And I think I'll keep it in the collection for quite some time. Well, just my two cents on uh, Jen's Anso's work. Not that I'm any kind of pro. But right there is knife perfection. I hope you guys like it. And uh, everybody stay safe.